Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the sigma orbitals of methane using the Kim method. Let us first note that methane belongs to the point group TD, the tetrahedral group. The tetrahedral group is a cubic group, so we can uh, plot the positions of the hydrogen atoms in methane um, at the corners, the opposite corners, in fact, of a cube, as shown in the figure on the screen. A necessary step in the Kim method is to assign x, y, z coordinates to these points. Each of these points is symmetry equivalent to the other ones, meaning that there is at least one symmetry operation, which will take one atomic position, one hydrogen, one S orbital, into another. We will uh, figure out which atomic orbitals on carbon are involved in the bonding after we derive the uh, linear combination of atomic orbitals. In table one, we list the assigned coordinates for the positions of the hydrogen 1s orbitals, which are symmetry equivalent to each other in methane. One thing to notice is that for each of the sets of coordinates, we have an odd number of minus signs, which is just a nice way to double check that one has not inadvertently made an error. Uh, there are numerous ways to assign these coordinates uh, consistent with the TD symmetry. All that is necessary is we assign the coordinates that way. In table two, we list the five irreducible representations of the tetrahedral group along with their associated basis functions. Notice that Unlike the projection operator method, we do not need the characters. Also, we do not need to deal individually with each and every one of the 24 symmetry operations in the tetrahedral group. So for a comparison uh, for the exact same molecule methane, please note the uh, video shown in the cards. Next, we develop a reducible representation, delta four, the permutation representation for this molecule. And we, since it's delta four, it's going to have a dimension of four. And to reduce this to a linear combination of irreducible representations, we just need to find which irreducible representations are non-null, that are not zero, uh, for this particular molecule. So we notice in table three that if we look at the A1 basis function, the function is uniquely one all the time anyway, so this is clearly not non-null. So uh, A1 is included in our reducible representation for sigma bonding. Next, we try one of the basis functions of the triply degenerate irreducible representation T2. We look at the basis function x. So to evaluate that function, we just simply take the x coordinate for each of the uh, hydrogen 1s orbitals, sigma 1 through sigma 4, in the molecule. And we see that um, they are not all zero. None of them is equal to zero. So therefore, we know that the T2 irreducible representation is included as well in our delta-4 reducible representation. 
So in this slide, we summarize that we can decompose delta 4 into A1 plus T2. Notice that A1 is non-degenerate, so it counts as one dimension. T2 is triply degenerate, so it counts for three dimensions. So we have de actually decomposed it into a four-dimensional space as we predicted. We also uh, summarize here the basis functions for each of the five different possible irreducible representations in the tetrahedral group TD. One nice feature of the Kim method with sigma bonding is that once we have the permutation uh, representation, we can just immediately uh, evaluate each of the irreducible representations that make it up to find the uh, coefficients for each of the hydrogen 1s orbitals in the overall molecular orbital. Compare this to the situation when we're looking at pi bonding, where we have to uh, determine which irreducible representation is involved with the z coordinate and then um, uh, form a, another reducible representation. Here, delta 4 is our final uh, representation for sigma bonding, so we just now uh, decompose it directly. We notice that A1, all the coefficients are equal to 1. Since all the coefficients are plus 1, we have sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus 1 times sigma 3 plus 1 times sigma 4. So we see that they all have the same phase. The only atomic orbital on carbon that has the proper symmetry and the correct energy is going to be the 2s orbital. So here we see it's uh, all bonding interaction with our A1 molecular orbital for methane. Now in table four, we evaluate the first of our T2 basis functions, the function x. So we get coefficients of 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. These are the coefficients for the uh, atomic orbitals on hydrogen in our linear combination of atomic orbitals to make a molecular orbital. So here we have an alteration in the signs. So we have an alteration in the phases. The atomic orbital on carbon that has the proper symmetry is going to be the 2px. And yes, there is, it's no coincidence that the 2px orbital is interacting with the x basis function of the T2 triply degenerate uh, molecular orbital. The second T2 basis function, Y, we evaluate in table 5. So here we see the, it's evaluated as minus 1, 1, 1, and minus 1. We just directly take the Y coordinate for each particular orbital, and that becomes the coefficient in the linear combination. Notice that we did not have to derive this T2 orbital from the previous T2 orbital, but we could just go at it directly uh, when we use the Kim method. So this gives us uh, coefficients of minus one, plus one, plus one, and minus one. So for this uh, molecular orbital, the atomic orbital on carbon that has the proper symmetry is the P 2PY orbital. So this gives the uh, molecular orbital that we've shown here. Uh, notice I didn't mention it for the first uh, T2 orbital, um, but each of these has exactly one node.
Now our third and final T2 basis function is Z. Uh, we evaluate and tabulate in table six, getting coefficients of plus one, plus one, minus one, and minus one. We just simply took the Z coordinates, and that is the value of the basis function Z at that particular point. And here we visualize the third and final T2 orbital. And we notice that the atomic orbital of carbon that has the proper symmetry to interact with it is going to be the 2PZ. Also notice that we alternate between blue and red color, uh, even in the linear combination, just to make it easier to visualize where the nodes are. And here we summarize the four uh, sigma bonding orbitals of methane. The first, it has a symmetry of A1, so sigma 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And then we have our triply degenerate T2 combinations here. One corresponding basis function X, one the basis function Y, and a third to basis function Z. So here we can kind of visualize and summarize the energies of the molecular orbitals. The A1, lowest energy, and then higher energy is going to be the triply degenerate T2 combination. We know it's higher in energy because A1 has no nodes, T2 has one node. Generally, the more nodes, the higher the kinetic energy of the orbital. Last but not least, we take the eight valence electrons, four from carbon, one from each of the hydrogen atoms, and then we allocate them into the molecular orbitals using, for example, the alpha principle and Hunt's rule. And we notice that we completely fill up both the A1 and the T2 bonding levels, and we don't uh, need to you know, end up populating any of the anti-bonding One last thing to notice is, is how this contradicts the idea in hybridization theory, where you imagine that we have four identical sp3 hybrids on carbon. We see by group theoretical arguments that when you have a tetrahedron, the highest level of degeneracy is three, not four. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.